members' business. Members who leave the chamber should do so quickly and quietly. The final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion Number 14471 in the name of Ian Gray on World Toilet Day 2015, We Can't Wait. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I'd be grateful if those members who would like to speak in this debate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on Ian Gray to open the debate. Seven minutes or so, Mr Gray. Uh, thank you very much, uh, President Officer. It does seem uh, appropriate that we have a debate marking World Toilet Day here uh, in the city, famously of Gardi Lou. However, sanitation in this city uh, started to improve a long time ago in the 18th century with the building of the new town and the understanding that municipal hygiene could save lives. 250 years later, and that is a message that is still to be heard by far too many and still to be acted on on behalf of many more. For people in developed countries like this one, flushing a toilet and turning on a tap is taken for granted. Toilets are the topic of the easiest and crassest of jokes, and indeed the organisers of World Toilet Day are not blind to the comic potential uh, of their endeavours with the slogan, uh, World Toilet Day 2015, we can't wait. But the hard truth is that more than 650 million people in the world do not have access to clean water, and more than 2.3 billion do not have access to a safe private toilet. Diarrhoea is one of the three most common killers of young children globally, along with pneumonia and malaria. Every year, Around 60 million children are born into homes without access to sanitation. And around 315,000 children under five die every single year from diarrhea caused by unsafe water and poor sanitation. That is almost 900 children every day. It is clear that they can't wait. And the worst, of course, is that this is a problem that can be solved. Almost 60% of those deaths could be simply prevented by clean water, sanitation and good hygiene, including hand washing with soap. In September, the UN adopted new global goals on sustainable development. The entire world came together to agree a path to a fairer, more sustainable world, one in which extreme poverty is eliminated and no matter where you are, you have enough to eat, clean water to drink, a safe private place to relieve yourself and soap and water to wash with. Goal six promises adequate, equitable access to water, sanitation and hygiene for everyone everywhere by 2030. And there is a, a bonus to be had from this because for every one pound invested in sanitation, there is around a four pound return. Health is improved, fewer days to lo are lost to illness and girls in particular stay on at school longer and complete their education. So World Toilet Day is not a joke, but important. And I'm glad to be the one to have us mark it, I think, for the first time. But you know, we don't always get toilets right here in Scotland either. I want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to my young constituent, Grace Warnock of Preston Pans, who is here this evening. 10-year-old Grace has Crohn's disease, happily, she is currently in remission, but she previously has had to use accessible disabled toilets when she was out and about because this enabled her to quickly access the toilet when she needed it 
and because it has washing facilities to hand and enough space for her mum to help her. Being able to use an accessible toilet affords grace, support and dignity when she needs it most. And that should be straightforward enough. But Grace's experience of using accessible toilets has sometimes not been positive. And that, in part, is due to many people thinking that if you're not a wheelchair user or have another visible disability, you shouldn't be using an accessible toilet. Grace responded by coming up with a great idea to help raise public understanding. She simply designed a new door sign to highlight the fact that not everyone who needs to use an accessible toilet uses a wheelchair or has a visible disability. She also wrote to me, uh, and I was able to arrange meetings for her with Independent Living in Scotland and Scottish Disability Equality Forum, both of whom have taken her campaign up. Grace and her campaign featured in The Big Issue, and she found a company willing to realise her design professionally. And we now have commitments from South Lanarkshire Council, Grace's own home council and mine of East Lothian, and also Enjoy Leisure, which runs our local leisure facilities, all of whom have agreed to trial Grace's sign for real in their buildings. Frankly, that's not bad for a 10-year-old. Uh, although it is worth saying that Grace clearly gets her flair for campaigning, not to say her unstoppable determination from her mum, Judith, who has been with her every step of the way. They are a formidable team. And they are not going to be satisfied until Gracie's sign goes up on accessible toilets all over Scotland. You know, I must admit, when I started this, I thought there would be somebody we could find which had responsibility for this kind of signage. And if we could win them over, the campaign would have won. But it seems there, there is no such body. So Grace and her mum are having to fight this pretty much one toilet door at a time. Grace was asked by the United Nations to help raise awareness of World Toilet Day uh, and indeed its themes so appropriate to her campaign of equality and dignity. Uh, she decided to do so by collecting funny pictures of toilets from friends and family on her Gracie Sign Facebook page uh, and you can see them there. But what I want to say to the Minister is this. If he would like to do something very practical to mark World Toilet Day, then here is my suggestion. Agree to adopt Gracie's sign and use the Scottish Government's offices to promote it throughout the public sector in Scotland. A little more dignity for all those who need accessible toilets. That's surely not too much to ask. Many thanks. I now uh, turn to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes or so, please. And I call Mark MacDonald to be followed by Jenny Mara. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I congratulate Ian Gray on bringing uh, this debate to the Chamber this evening. And I think he makes an important point that um, while there may be a bit of behind-the-hand sniggering about the concept of debating about toilets, it is important to remember that First and foremost, there are many nations across this world where, as Ian Gray rightly points out, uh, the use of the toilet uh, is both uh, hazardous to health and also often extremely dangerous just in terms of accessing a toilet in the first place. Um, but I think Ian Gray makes some very important points, and I was very interested to hear about the example of his constituent and uh, having been in that situation with my son, who, uh, because he is not toilet trained, uh, requires more space than a toilet cubicle often in order to use the toilet. Not to mention the fact that, the fact that um, he uh, gets sensory overload from the sound of hand dryers. So using an accessible toilet where you know that it will only be yourselves in there uh, and you won't have to worry about somebody setting off a hand dryer and potentially triggering, triggering an autistic meltdown is extremely important. But when you emerge from that toilet holding the hand of your child who is walking freely, um, it does often get met with sceptical looks and people do 
uh, I think, as Ian Gray says, associate the concept of accessible toilets with wheelchair users. So I was interested in what he said, and uh, I say to him that if he wants to forward on information to me regarding Grace's campaign and her sign, I'd be more than happy to receive it and look and see if there's anything I can do through my work with the organisations like National Autistic Society Scotland and also in my constituency to try and maybe promote this as an opportunity to, to change signage because I think uh, you know, the, the, the work that, that he has outlined that Grace is doing I think is commendable but uh, you know, the more shoulders that you put to the wheel the more chance there is of making change so I'm happy uh, to receive that from him and to, to perhaps have a conversation with him at some point regarding that. And there's one other thing I wanted to mention today, presiding officer, and that's the, uh, the campaign on changing places toilets, which I've been uh, heavily involved in alongside the organisation PAMIS, who are leading on this in Scotland, and also the Changing Places Consortium, which uh, are promoting changing places toilets. And um, the, the issue first sort of came to light to me when I shadowed a, a carer, um, Stephanie Chalmers from Turriff in Aberdeenshire, whose son Connor. Um, was uh, required hoist equipment in order to use the toilet and it outlined to me just how difficult it was for Stephanie and Connor to enjoy what most of us would classify as a normal day out because the you know the often required military planning in order to know exactly where they could access a toilet facility that was suitable for Connor's needs and make sure they were somewhere in the vicinity of said facility in order to then access it should the need arise and that's why I've been so impressed with the work that's been done, uh, driven by uh, the Changing Places Consortium and PAMIS, uh, ably backed by the Scottish Government's uh, Keys for Life Learning Disability Strategy, and why the target that was in that strategy has not just been met, it has been smashed. And work continues to go on to promote uh, Changing Places toilets. And I think one of the things that's been highlighted to me is the idea that um, these facilities can only exist in large uh, venues and uh, to some extent that's true I think we need to see more large venues adopting a changing places toilet I know Jenny Mara who I suspect is about to speak in the debate has called for that at the SECC that's something I've backed I've written to the football clubs in Scotland encouraging them to incorporate changing places facilities I wrote last season to the all of the top flight teams and the top three teams in the championship who at that time were Hearts, Hibs and Rangers I only received three replies from those 15 uh, letters that I sent from Celtic, Dundee United and Aberdeen, which I passed on to PAMIS, and I know that they've been trying to engage with those clubs. But I think until such time as we have uh, sporting venues, music venues, airports, we don't have a single changing places toilet in any of Scotland's airports. That's something I think needs to change as well. Until we can make those steps forward, I think we will be in a situation where um, many people will still feel that the the dignity that is afforded to all of us when we go to any venue, go on holiday, go for a day out, uh, is being denied to them in some way. So I commend Ian Gray for bringing this debate to the Chamber and allowing us the opportunity to outline, I think, some very important points that relate to it. Many thanks. And I now call Jenny Mara to be followed by Cameron Buchanan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I firstly congratulate Ian Gray on securing this important debate and using it to highlight what is undoubtedly an important issue uh, for many Scots. Can I also take the opportunity to congratulate her young, uh, his young constituent on her uh, assiduous campaigning um, and, um, and commitment to this issue. Um, I was very interested to hear Mark Macdonald's uh, remarks there, and he is right. I, I wanted to use my time in this debate to talk about uh, the Changing Places campaign. As Mr Macdonald outlined, PAMIS has done a wealth of work supporting families who have uh, children, brothers and sisters with profound and multiple learning disabilities. And for them, um, a day out or a concert or a visit to uh, a sports stadium is not the same. As Mark said, it's an assiduously planned operation and it's planned around the facilities that exist because they need bigger toilet facilities. They need toilet facilities with hoists. Uh, they need more space. In, in the toilet um, and they need many extra features that these changing places toilets provide. I understand that these specific toilets cost about £100,000 each to install. Um, and the Scottish Parliament actually has one here and it's used by uh, visitors to this building. 
But I think it's particularly important, um, both for people in our own communities to be able uh, to, to plan a day out like every other family, to have basic sanitation um, facilities that they need, like Ian Gray says. But there's also aspects here of accessible tourism. Uh, this, this Parliament is committed on a cross-party basis uh, to improving Scotland's reputation for accessible tourism. But how can that tourism be fully accessible? if basic facilities um, like proper toilets and changing places toilets don't exist in our cultural, social and sporting venues. Um, I was very pleased to hear Mark Macdonald say he'd written to a number of the uh, sports clubs in Scotland and that's work that I fully commend and support him on. I myself have written to uh, SSE Hydro and SECC to ask if they will install one there because if you think about the incredible amount of acts that are coming Coming to perform in the hydro, but for many families uh, that will just not be accessible to them because they will not be able to, to take their loved one to the toilet. So it's simple things that we will... Yes, absolutely. Matt McDonald. I, I agree with the member entirely. Would you also uh, accept and acknowledge that it's not just that they sometimes are prevented from going, it's that when they do go, uh, they often have to change their loved ones uh, on the floor of a toilet, which can often be uh, dirty, uh, it can often be wet, uh, and if nothing else, is deeply undignified. Jenny Manor. Mr McDonald is absolutely right, and I think him and I have both seen videos and heard families talk about these experiences. It just makes for a much more uh, dignified and, uh, and civilised day out if these uh, facilities are uh, available. I was very pleased to hear that one has been installed in Murrayfield and Pamis themselves have been doing a whole host of work and campaigning on this issue. I would ask the Minister, perhaps in, in summing up, to, to express his commitment to the Changing Places campaign. And can I finish my contribution by paying tribute to Loretta Lamb, who uh, died recently but has really spearheaded this campaign on behalf of uh, PAMIS, but was sadly taken from us just a few weeks ago. Her contribution to this area and for the families, she will be sorely missed. Many thanks. I now call Cameron Buchanan to be followed by Hans Alan Malik. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. When this motion first came up, I thought it was a bit of a joke, or rather a bummer. Indeed, I'm not sure if it still isn't, but it is obviously deadly serious, as we've heard from Mark, Jenny and Ian. And I have to be careful not to fill this slot with double entendres or even more obvious toilet terms. I found these World Days or World Weeks or World Awareness Weeks, as they seem to happen all the time, rather ridiculous. But in this case, I've read the motion and I understand exactly what it is trying to achieve. And this is basically about improvements in sanitation worldwide. At one point, I thought it was also to do with the Edinburgh City Council closing the public toilets and a protest against this, but it isn't. Access to clean and safe sanitation, including toilets, is of fundamental importance to human health, safety and dignity. It is entirely right, therefore, that the Sustainable Development Goals prioritise access to safe sanitation for all. However, governments declaring something to be a goal does not mean it will happen. And government initiatives are the only way to make it happen. And these changing places toilet is an example, and I would also be very interested in what the Minister say about that. I came across them as well in another venue and with another person, and it's very undignified. As progress against the older UN development goals showed, much progress is brought about by economic development. So while it is worth promoting sustainable development goals, it is vital that the policies are put in place to help developing countries' economies to trade feed freely. The UK government has been at the forefront of international efforts to help sanitation projects in poor countries where inadequacy of, to inadequacy of toilet facilities is most marked. Over the last parliament, the UK government helped to provide access to water, sanitation and improved hygiene to over 51 million people. This included supplying clean water and latrines to 340,000 people in Haiti with the help of local volunteers, which was reinforced, which is very important, by a public health education campaign to spread the word to 125,000 people in the area. But of course, this does not miss the point that to make a lasting difference in clean sanitation, it takes more than building some toilets. I read that in Bathgate there was toilet twinning, which has been recently named as Scotland's first toilet twin, toilet twin town. There are even schemes where people were paid to use toilets in India as the existing public toilets are left unused for a variety of reasons. I think this should really have been called World Sanitation Day rather than World Toilet Day because it's really to ensure that the availability of sustainable management of water and sanitation for all, wherever they are. 
Taking, taking this closer to home in France, there is a proliferation of toilets which have been modernised from the old pissoir that you used to see in the streets, with these famous pictures of men coming up buttoning their trousers. The French have a rather progressive attitude towards these matters, or should I say a more open attitude, and they have these toilets now where you pay one euro to use them, and they automatically clean everything that is in sight, including possibly your bottom if you're not quick enough. Taking a more serious line, it is basic sanitation that needs improving, not just toilets, as we can see from the lack of access in some places and around the world. It is something that needs thought and money spent on it. But this is, debate is more than about toilets. It's about sanitation in general. I think that going to the toilet, toilet is a bit like death. When you've got to go, you've got to go. Thank you. And to now call Hans Alamalik. Thank you very much and good afternoon, Presiding Officer. I would like to like to thank Ian Gray for securing today's debate and for recognizing its importance to the public. Access to toilets is something that the majority of us in Scotland take for granted, but proper sanitation has a major impact on people's health, dignity and safety, especially for girls and women around the world. I was surprised to learn that 2.5 billion people do not have access to proper sanitation or toilets and that in 45 countries, fewer than half of the population have access to adequate sanitation. When, proper, when, providing, when preparing for this speech, I took a look at the World Bank statistics on these countries, and I was very surprised to see India on the list. According to the data, only 40% of the population have access to improved sanitation facilities. Another current country on the list is Malawi, with 41% access. Improved sanitation is often a neglected area of investment when reserves are scarce. It is generally seen as a result of economic growth, not something that can enable growth. Countries such as India, which have a huge and growing population, have many challenges in Speeding, spreading sanitation, especially in rural areas. I have actually spent significant amounts of time in rural areas of India and Pakistan and seen for myself what impact improved sanitation has on communities. It is not just a matter of building sanitation facilities, but you can also provide and encourage people to use the toilets and educate people on hygiene issues such as probably washing hands, which has already been mentioned, as you are basically asking people to break a habit of a lifetime, and that is not easy. The focus on general equality is very important, and the abuse of proper, um, absence of proper facilities. When speaking, uh, seeking uh, private, uh, privacy, Women, women might decide to go to toilets in the early morning hours or in the dark evenings. If a woman or a girl are, is forced to manage their needs in the open, such as by the roadside or in uh, dark fields at dawn, they are particularly vulnerable to violence. On another note, I would like to congratulate Ian Christian Grace Warlock for her campaign for better signage and accessible toilets. In the time when many local authorities are no longer providing public toilets, it is important that we provide access, accessible facilities for those in need. Many businesses, toilets, many businesses displayed signs stating that facilities are for paying customers or customers only. However, that causes problems for people who may not be visibly disabled, disabled but need to uh, need the toilet more frequently than others. Might I suggest that future premises are open to all uh, when it comes to businesses providing facilities? And I have to say that I have to congratulate um, Grace Warlock for her initiative. I wish her every success in that. I hope that the minister will take on board her suggestions, uh, supported by Ian Gray, so validly, and I hope that we can actually change things around for the people of Scotland and display to the rest of the world how we can lead this once again as a Scottish nation. Thank you very much, Provider Officer. 
Thank you. And can I now invite the Minister, Jamie Hepburn, to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes or so, please. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Officer, and can I begin by uh, joining with others and congratulating Ian Gray on securing uh, this debate to mark World Toilet Day uh, 2015? Uh, others have made the point, but uh, I'll reiterate that there could have been some uh, the potential for some cynical uh, commentary on the fact that we're holding uh, this debate. There, indeed, there may well still be. I think that would be a matter to be uh, regretted, President Officer, because this is uh, an important uh, issue. Members' uh, thoughtful uh, contributions demonstrate that to be uh, the case. Each uh, contribution in its own way has raised awareness of the need uh, for uh, access to, to proper uh, sanitation. The important contribution uh, this makes to gender equality, health, dignity, security and social and economic development across the world, something uh, that we hear in Scotland uh, many of us uh, take it uh, for granted, although, of course, uh, members have rightly uh, raised some uh, issues about the domestic uh, scene as well, which I will respond to uh, in uh, a few moments. Uh, but uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, reiterate the point that Ian Gray made. The, the Sustainable uh, Development Goals agreed in September uh, this year include the critical uh, target of ensuring access to water and sanitation uh, for all, a, a goal I am sure we all wholeheartedly uh, support. Some 2.5 billion people uh, do not have access to adequate and safe uh, sanitation. That is a, a global uh, shame, President Officer, and presents a challenge that we must step up to and we must uh, meet. Uh, World Toilet Day raises uh, this issue and highlights the need uh, for action today, action that can't uh, wait. The global context here is that water scarcity affects more than 40 per cent of people around the world, and an alarming figure that is projected to increase with the rise of global temperatures as a consequence of climate change. Although much progress has been made, some 2.1 billion people have gained access to improved water sanitation since 1990. As I have set out, the numbers who still do not have safe water or adequate sanitation are still far too many. And we know that manifests itself in very many negative ways. We know that every two minutes a child dies of diseases related to diarrhoea, which could have been prevented by improved water sanitation and hygiene. And 2014, 159 million children worldwide were stunted due to malnutrition. One of the main causes is wash-related disease like diarrhoea that prevent the proper absorption of nutrients from food. Some countries lose as much as 7 per cent of their GDP because of inadequate sanitation with wash-related diseases causing missed days of work due to illness or caring for sick relatives. And 443 million sick days are taken by children every year because of wash-related diseases, then, uh, therefore missing out on uh, their much-needed uh, education. This is a major problem impacting every continent. It is a problem for us all. It is therefore incumbent on us all to respond. Ensuring uh, universal access to safe and affordable drinking water by 2030 requires we invest in adequate infrastructure, provide sanitation facilities and encourage hygiene at every level. This uh, government is proud to be active in this area of global concern and through our Scotland Hydro uh, Nation programme and our international development activity, uh, we can uh, try and make a difference. We also recognise that Scotland has much to offer the world in terms of knowledge and expertise in a range of key water resource management areas. So, one of the focuses of our Hydro Nation strategy in the years ahead will be on where Scotland can add value and contribute towards uh, solving global uh, water issues. The Sustainable Development Goal in Water and, and Sanitation will help provide the uh, global political context for our activity, working hard to deliver on our vision of Scotland as the world's first hydro nation, one which manages its water environment to the best advantage, employing its knowledge and expertise effectively at home and internationally. The Climate Justice Fund has been supported by hydro nation funds of £6 million so far and has delivered 11 water adaptation projects in Malawi, Tanzania, Rwanda and Zambia. Scottish Water have been long-term supporters of water aid and have raised money and taken part in practical work and will continue to do so. And earlier this year in May, we hosted the 15th International Water Resources Association Congress in Edinburgh within the region of 1,000 delegates discussing groundbreaking research and the key global issues relating to water and sanitation. We will continue to deliver practical projects on the ground and host and participate in the global discussions on water and sanitation issues and we will work with governments such as the Government of Malawi uh, to make sure we are supporting work that is appropriate for each country and has the engagement of local communities uh, and uh, makes a difference on the ground. Uh, for example, we have provided funding of 
uh, just uh, over £390,000 to support a project which will aim to improve the health and well-being of impoverished families in Bihar and in India. Uh, this project uh, aims to deliver health and hygiene workshops and will provide loans to clients to enable the installation of uh, toilets, water systems and biogas stoves and will help to improve the health and well-being of impoverished families in uh, Bihar. Uh, as this is, of course, there is a domestic angle to uh, today's debate as well, uh, and I did uh, undertake to respond to uh, some of the issues raised, uh, which I will do now. Uh, President Officer, the Changing Places uh, campaign by Palmas, which was uh, cited by both uh, Jenny Marr and uh, Mark MacDonald, who I have, uh, of course, he will recall, met to discuss uh, the uh, uh, issues raised through the uh, campaign previously. Uh, the uh, accessible uh, changing places toilets are, uh, as Mr MacDonald made the point, recognising the keys to life, the Scottish Learning Disability Strategy, uh, as an essential part of uh, community facilities, indeed the key to community inclusion for people with complex needs. There are now 120 accessible uh, changing place uh, toilets in Scotland. That is significant progress. I would recognise and uh, responding to the point about Jenny Mara to uh, re-emphasise my support for uh, the campaign and the further rollout of facilities uh, is progress, but we still have further to go. We need to ensure uh, a better geographic distribution of these facilities. And I would also uh, accept we need to work with uh, some of the uh, locations which can expect a, a high number of visitors as well to ensure that more of them have uh, this type of facility uh, too. Uh, let me uh, add my congratulations and also welcome to the gallery uh, tonight to uh, Grace Warnock. Uh, I uh, want to congratulate her for her uh, outstanding and imaginative awareness raising campaign to secure better uh, door signs for accessible toilets in Scotland. I am sure that Mr Gray is proud to be uh, Grace's MSP, and uh, rightly so. She has reminded us of the important fact that some uh, conditions uh, are hidden from view, and therefore uh, that accessible toilets are not only for people who use uh, wheelchairs. I know that this is a matter that uh, Mr Gray uh, wrote to uh, my colleague Maureen Watt, although it was uh, Margaret Burgess who responded on the issue, and I think that did facilitate uh, a meeting for Grace uh, with uh, the Independent uh, Living uh, in Scotland uh, organisation with uh, Heather Fiskin, their project manager, which of course has now uh, moved forward so that there is some work uh, underway uh, in South Lanarkshire, as uh, Mr Gray uh, referred to, and he also referred to the work that is underway uh, in East Lothian. He made a request of me as uh, Minister to look uh, at how the Scottish Government can further promote accessible signage. I am certainly happy to look at what the experience is in South Lanarkshire to see what lessons can be uh, learned there. I am also happy, uh, even before we reach that stage, to see what further steps uh, we can take. So This is something I will uh, give consideration to. I will come back to uh, Mr Gray on so that he can keep uh, Grace uh, up to date on the uh, progress, because undeniably there is significant progress uh, through uh, her campaign. Can I conclude, uh, President Officer, by congratulating Ian Gray on securing this debate, I join in welcoming the significant progress uh, that uh, Grace Warnock has already made with her campaign. I note the vital importance of providing adequate and equitable uh, access to sanitation here in Scotland and across the globe. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes Ian Gray's debate, World Toilet Day 2015. We can't wait. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.